quick uh, comment on the long-term play in Europe watching that today. The hockey was good. Uh, in a perfect world, Gary Bettman would like to see what happened in Europe, in your opinion. Then make more money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. I, think that, I think that's probably it. You know, I, I think one of the biggest concerns is, said, you know, someone said to me that there's only four Slovaks in the National Hockey League this year. You know, that's probably the concern is to get, um, you know, some of those countries make sure that they keep the number of players up. Slovakia would be one. The Czech Republic in the past has been the other. You'll notice that they said they're going to Prague next year. They announced it today. Um, I just think they have to be consistent in in going over there. And I like the fact next year they're going there with more games. Um, you know, it's just a reminder. Like, they've made a lot of effort to grow the game in the United States. And I think they've been successful. And maybe they took Europe for granted. You can't take Europe for granted. And even though we're seeing some success in the United States and they're trying to begin their foothold in China, you can't forget places like Canada and Europe. And I think that that's what this is a reminder of, that you have to give them a good product and you have to give them players like Line that they're going to get excited about every year. All right, speaking of Gary Bettman, leagues in the past have been very wary about being associated in any way, shape, or form with gambling or gambling entities. And yet, uh, we saw the NHL do a deal with MGM. Uh, obviously, the answer might be similar to the first one when it comes to money, but are you surprised that the NHL is walking down this road with MGM? No, it's gambling is, is normal now. I mean, look, in our country, we just legalized marijuana. Um, a lot of the old school vices, old school, I guess, are, are going by the wayside. Um, you know, like, and the thing is, too, is, guys, and I know you're both fans of international soccer, you know, pe my relatives who live overseas have been making fun of North American Puritanism on gambling for a long time. In the rest of the world, it's perfectly normal. You go to Europe, you go to Asia, you go to China. Um, those people, they love gambling on anything, even their sports. And it hasn't necessarily led to the end of the world. We're the last ones to do it. And, you know, I think the more I think about this, guys, and the more I learn about it, it's not necessarily the money you're going to make from gambling, but the money you can make on your media rights. If you bring up engagement, like for example, and I wrote this in the column this week, guys, our employer, Rogers, how long, how much do you think about their, they wonder that in a couple of years we'll be watching the game on our phones or our iPads or our, our home televisions and they'll have a, our, an app on our phone or our button on our remote where Connor McDavid gets tripped and you, it's, our Oilers going to score on this power play and you're like, yes, I want to bet 20 bucks on it. That's what everybody wants to have here. And if you look in a couple years, the U.S. TV media rights are up. And there's a lot of rumblings that ESPN is going to get back in. Well, if you can prove that the gambling brings your engagement up and you can make that part of your broadcast, I think that makes your media rights more valuable. I mean, we've got eight more years with ours, but thank God. But, you know, <laughs> I, I think in the States, um, I, I wonder if they can prove that gambling brings engagement up and breaks their media rights more valuable. Yeah. See, if, if you can prove that to ESPN, like ESPN Plus, they would eat that up, man. Like, oh, yeah. That well, would be that, tremendous property. It's all going to be the same eventually. It will be. It will be. Well, I'm going to have to live on your guy's couch because I'll gamble out of my own home by then. <laughs> all right. I, mine needs a vacuum, but you can come over. <laughs> I don't want to tell you what's on it. All right, let's move on. And you uh, can hand out candy at SIDS because he yeah, I need a, doesn't I need do a guy it. who can help me out in Halloween's, Fridge. <laughs> uh, Fridge, I swear, I'm going to pro I, I promise you, I promise you, I promise okay. you, I'm not going to ask you about Willie Nylander. Yes, you are. Yes, I am. Yes. Um, three, three Carolina Hurricane scouts apparently are in the building at yep. Scotiabank Arena to watch. You love your scout stories. About well, no, no, but it's, it's, legi it's either legit or it's just regular hockey stuff, and it can be both. Can be. You know if this is regular hockey stuff or is Sid walking down the right road here? This is different, and, and the reason it's different is, you know, the other night people were talking. I think there were 25 scouts in Vancouver for Vancouver, Minnesota. That was a night where there were only two games in the National Hockey League. And sometimes when you have a night like that, you will see that kind of concentration at a game because there just aren't a lot of places to go to. And it, 
that point in time, both Edmonton and Vancouver were at home and Calgary was coming home. That's not unusual. As you guys have mentioned, we have a full schedule tonight. For three guys to be at one game, that is different. That's an eyebrow raiser. And the one thing that really makes me more curious about it is that the guy they're supposedly scouting, sources tell me he's not in the lineup tonight. So what are they looking at? Uh, mm. Yeah, what the hell are they looking at, Fridge? <laughs> he's to add on to a deal that would possibly be happening, and that would make it a bigger deal, perhaps. Right. In, unless they've got something going with Dallas, it, it, it leads me to believe there's the possibility that if Carolina is the trade partner somewhere down the road, that Carolina is thinking about something else or they're thinking about something else entirely aside from the obvious. But, you know, we all know Carolina has been heavily rumored and, and I do believe they are interested. And, you know, you're, you're sitting here saying this does you know, thicken the plot. I texted a couple guys today. I said, is this usual or unusual? And they said, this is different, which makes me feel much more confident in my answer. Wow. Hmm. Is, is, is the conclusion of a trade becoming more and more likely in your mind as the resolution for William Nylander and the Toronto Maple Leafs? I, I, I think it's I think the best way for me to answer that question is Tim is I think it becomes more likely that Toronto considers the possibility of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know I, there's still a month here. You know you guys have been through contract negotiations. I've been through contract negotiations. I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this show who've done contract negotiations. You know sometimes it's all a matter of shifting leverage and, and who believes they have what leverage when. Um, you know, unfortunately, we don't have a deadline for another month, and sometimes, you, you know, when you get past the initial first games played, you're kind of in a position where you have to wait for that final deadline to happen, and we've still got a while to go. So, you know, I, I'm sure at various points during this, um, William Nylander has felt, you know, Toronto's going to trade him, Toronto's not going to trade me, Toronto's going to make me sit, Toronto's going to sign me. I think you probably change your opinion uh, every once in a while. I think this has put a lot of strain on everybody involved. I don't think anybody is thrilled with this. I think that, you know, both sides are showing they can be tough and they can be stubborn. But I, I still do think that both outcomes are possible. Although, you know, right now, I'm told they're at a total stalemate. Hmm. Wow. For just for my own personal uh, info, were you asked to dress up for Halloween on air? You should talk. <laughs> what do I have to do with this? I'm asking you a legit question. Oh, I thought you were talking about me now. No, not now. You look good. You look great. No, he's talking, talking about Hockey Central at noon I'm, yesterday. I'm talking about Halloween. This wasn't, this wasn't uh -oh. a shred. But I'm, I'm like not commenting on your wrinkly I do collar. Like the, I do like the response immediately firing back Defensive with a passion. Much. What about you? Like, <laughs> you know what? Uh, honestly, like this week we were very lucky because... Our Wednesday show got moved to Monday because we couldn't get the game we wanted. Right. So I got to go out and <laughs> trick or treat with go. Max last night. Nice. But put it this way: after seeing yesterday's Hockey Central at noon, I'm going to put an addendum of my contract that I never have to work on October 31st. Mm, probably a good idea. Fair. All right. Thank probably. you. Sorry about that, Sid. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Shout out to the guys at noon yesterday. They're they're better people than I. Freed, yes. thank you very much. The impeccably dressed Elliot Freeman <laughs> joining us here on a Wednesday. Thanks, bro. Take care, guys. Bye. <laughs> There's Elliot Freeman. <laughs>